In this video, we'll walk you through the winterization process of an irrigation system. This procedure is performed in seasonal or cold weather climates before the first freeze of winter. If you don't properly winterize your irrigation system, the pipes, sprinklers, and other components that still have water in them can freeze and crack. In areas where winterization is mandatory, irrigation systems are installed using one of three types of water removal. Manual drain, auto drain, or blowout. If you're unfamiliar with the system that you're working on, it's best to use the blowout method. The blowout method uses controlled compressed air to clear out water in the pipes and sprinkler heads to prevent damage to the system. Before introducing any pressurized air into the irrigation system, it is important to walk through and look for any devices in the system that should not be exposed to pressurized air. Devices like flow meters, flow sensors, and backflows should be removed or bypassed to prevent damage to these costly components. Manufacturers will often supply a blank fitting that can replace the paddle wheel flow sensor in the sensor T. Do not throw this piece away. This will be important to have handy when winterizing the irrigation system. If the flow meter is not easily removable from the irrigation system, bypass valves should be installed to divert the air around the sensor. If you have a flow meter or submeter in place, you may need to remove the meter entirely and install a temporary piece of pipe, like a Schedule 80 or galvanized steel nipple that is measured to fit in place of the meter. You do this because the components inside a flow meter can be easily damaged by high velocity air rushing through. The blowout method utilizes an air compressor with a cubic feet per minute CFM rating of 80 to 100 for any mainline of 2 inches or less. Please note that a small shop compressor 1 to 3 horsepower will not have enough free air to properly winterize the system. Do not attempt to fully charge the holding tank, then release the highly pressurized airflow into the mainline to compensate for the compressor's lack of CFM. The compressor attaches to the mainline via a blowout valve, quick coupler, a hose bib, or another type of connection. The location where this connection occurs should be located just downstream from the backflow prevention device. Compressed air should not be blown through any backflow device. To start the blowout process, locate the point of connection for the irrigation system and shut off the irrigation water supply. This may be located in a vault in the front yard, in the garage, or in the basement of the home. Let's take a quick look at the point of connection in this home's basement. You'll first see the location in which the water main line enters the basement, followed by an isolation valve for both the house and the irrigation system. Next we have a hose bib with an anti-siphon valve so no water can enter back into the water supply. Then we move right along to the point in our supply system known as the irrigation system point of connection. This is where water coming from the city service splits off from the delivery line to the home to service irrigation water. You'll notice on the home side that there's a pressure regulator that restricts pressure to the home to prevent damage to the devices inside. There is an additional isolation valve after the point of connection that will allow you to shut off water to the irrigation system while still allowing water to flow through into the home. Lastly, we have a drain valve to drain any water left in the line after the blowout process is complete. Once the water is off at the point of connection, activate a station on the controller to release any residual water pressure. Now, head over to the backflow preventer. Let's take a look at a couple of connection methods. This is the pressure vacuum breaker backflow prevention device. Check your local codes and regulations for the type of backflow device that is correct in your area. Close the backflow isolation valves. With the compressor valve in the closed position, remove the plug at the blowout connection point. Do this slowly as there still may be pressure in the system. Install the blowout connection adapter and attach the air compressor hose to the blowout fitting.
Activate the station on the controller for the zone of sprinklers highest in elevation and furthest from the compressor. Then slowly open the valve on the compressor. This should gradually introduce air into the system. The blowout pressure should remain below the maximum operating pressure specification of the lowest pressure rated component on the zone, and it should never exceed 80 psi. Each station or zone should be activated starting from the furthest station or zone from the compressor, working your way to the closest station or zone to the compressor. Each station or zone should be activated until little or no water can be seen exiting the heads. To help speed up the process, it's a good idea to use a remote like the Rome or Rome Excel or utilize the remote feature in the Hydrowise app. It's better to use two or three short cycles per station or zone than have one long cycle. Once the station or cycle is dry, you should not continue to blow air through the pipe. Compressed air moving through dry pipes can cause friction, which can create heat and could cause damage to the pipes or sprinklers. Never run the compressor without at least one irrigation control valve open. Once the water has been removed from the irrigation system, disconnect the air compressor and release any air pressure that may be present. If your backflow device has ball valves, open and close the isolation valves on the backflow device numerous times to ensure that any trapped water has escaped from the upper areas. Leave the isolation valves open at a 45 degree angle, approximately half open, and do the same for each test cock on the backflow device, as these are also small ball valves. This step will help prevent water from getting trapped in the ball valves and causing damage to the device when the temperatures reach freezing. Remove the air compressor fitting and reinstall the plug removed earlier. Lastly, locate any upstream drain valve in the irrigation system and allow the remaining water in that section to drain out. Do not allow the air pressure to exceed 80 psi for systems with PVC piping and 50 psi for systems with polyethylene piping. Do not leave flow meters or flow sensors installed. Always remove them first and seal the pipe to avoid damage to the mechanism. Do not stand over component parts while the system is pressurized with air. Do not leave the air compressor unattended. Do not blow the system out through a backflow or pump. First blow out the system, then drain the backflow or pump. Do not leave the manual drain valves open after the blowout. Winterizing irrigation systems can be dangerous for the system and most importantly the person performing the blowout process. If not prepared with the right tools and training to do the job correctly, irreparable damage to the irrigation system could cost you and your company thousands of dollars in installation cost. Although the potential cost of labor and materials is high, the physical well-being of you and your employees could be at stake. If you or your company have not been properly trained on this process, it's a good idea to contact your local irrigation distributor for more information about how winterizations are performed in your area. For areas where winterization is needed, knowing the process involved as mentioned in this video will ensure that your customer's irrigation system will last for many years.